We invite you to reflect on Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11 to 22. And the title is, The Blood That Trumps All. Lord, we pray that as we look at your word, that you would speak to us, uh, that you would grow us in Jesus' name. Amen. You know the pride that comes from having gone to one of, a, of these schools. Or bees, for instance, of King's College, Jibudo or Gayaza, talk about their schools with, with, uh, with so much pride, with the exclusion of others, as if others who went to other schools didn't go to schools at all. No offense intended, but uh, this, this same attitude of sort of a superiority uh, 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 that downplays others uh, 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 affects the way many people look at their race, their tribe, their clan, and sometimes their family. Uh, and they, 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 they come with a, a better than attitude. Our text sets a standard above which no other can trump. Not your school, not your tribe, not your class, or any form of social standing trumps the relationship or the relationships established by the blood of Christ. Listen to verse 13. But now in Christ Jesus, you who are once far away, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. So let us read the whole, the rest of the text to get a sense of context. It says, therefore, remember that formerly you were Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, which is done by human hands. Remember that at the time you were separate from Christ, excluded from the citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of promise without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has met two groups, one, and has destroyed the barrier dividing, the dividing wall of hostility by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two. That's making peace. And in one body reconciled both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him, we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become the holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God's spirit lives by his spirit. You see, there are walls that separate us. Outside of Christ, there are many walls that separate us. He says, remember you were formerly, formerly you were Gentiles by birth, called uncircumcised. By those who call themselves the circumcision, you are excluded from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel, foreigners to the covenants of promise, without hope, without God. But in Christ, you who are far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. You see, Jew and Gentile is a wall, there's a wall that separated them. This wall driven by their religious persuasion. We know that many walls in the world are driven by differences in, in religion. They were the circumcised and the uncircumcised. The ex those excluded from the citizenship of Israel. The, the Gentiles were foreigners to the covenants of promise. Separated from Christ and separated from God. You see in the world, there are other walls that separate us. For instance, race is a great separator. Each race feeling a sense of superiority uh, or a better than attitude. And many of our walls in the world are dri driven by ethnicity. On the African tri uh, tri continent, tribe is a great separator. I did a, a wedding uh, not long ago where the parents refused to show up because their daughter was marrying somebody from a different tribe. He was, the father was so prejudiced against his tribe that when I went to see him to try to reconcile the family, he told me, no way, my daughter is not getting married to that man from that tribe. Those, those people eat their children. <laughs> I was hearing this for the first time. Tribe can be a great separator. Do that we even accuse other people of cannibalism. Social class is sometimes a great separator. Again, I did a wedding 
where the father and the aunt refused to show up because they didn't want to get their, their daughter married to somebody they considered poor. So they didn't show up. Uh, and so there are many things that separate. And the text tells us that this, in Christ, these walls are broken down. It, and, and it begins with, a, with but now. In Christ Jesus, you, those who are far away have been brought near by the bride of Christ. Remember, uh, in, in, in verse 4, we had, it, we had another but. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive in Christ, even we're dead in our transgressions. You see, there the, are the, 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 the things that separate us. But in Christ, as the, the, the Swahili say, mambo egewu emegewuka, things have changed. What has happened is by the blood of Christ and by the cross, the, the people who were alienated from each other, as we read in, in verse 11 and, and, and 12, People who were alienated are now reconciled. In chapter 19, consequently, you are no longer foreigners and still angels, but fellow, fellow citizens with God's people, members of his household. You see, through Christ, the alienated are brought now back. The answer is simply in that Jesus died. And because Jesus died and did, died by design and rose and is alive, those who are formerly far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Those who were separated uh, in the flesh, enemies in the flesh, have been brought together because it is, the enmity has been abolished. Those who were separated by sin have been reconciled at the cross by the blood of Christ. You see, reconciliation takes place and the divide is move, moved away. Jew and Gentile are no longer strangers. They're no longer aliens. They're fellow citizens with saints, part of the same household. In verse 20, this, it describes one common foundation of this new, new, unit, the new unity, the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, with Christ Jesus as the cornerstone. And this unity of Jew and Gentile is built on Christ's saving work. And now they are both being built into, a, 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 into one building. They are both indwelt by Christ himself. Just imagine the cross in the middle. On one hand is Jew, on the other is Gentile, and they have things that separate them. Their understanding of the law, their understanding of God, but at, cro at the cross, Jesus' death on the cross brings each one of them to God. And now, at the cross, there's no Jew, there's no Gentile. The result is that there's a new humani humanity that is created. Peace is preached to those who are far and those who are near. The, the dividing barriers are destroyed. The law and its commands and is set aside. It becomes a guide rather than a separator. The hostility is broken down. And the biggest wall of hostility stood between man and God. Because sin separates man and God. And when at the cross that hostility was dealt with, the hostility between man and God that also took care of the hostility between man and man, Jew and Gentile, rich and poor, educated and uneducated. Those barriers break down. The new reality now is there's peace for all. There's access both of all to the Father through Christ. We are now fellow citizens. We are God's people. We are members of his household. We are built on the foundation of the apostles. We are God's holy temple. God indwells his people. His death reconciled us to God. His death reconciles us to one another. So how do we apply this? I'd like to suggest to you that this week, be deliberate 
to welcome new members if, uh, in, in, in the church every week. Aim to bring somebody. You see, the church can be the loneliest, loneliest, loneliest place for people who come for the first time. Be intentional about welcoming those who are, you're not, who are new. Invite people from di different tribes, different ethnic backgrounds into the, your fellowship because you understand that the dividing walls at the cross all crumble. Broaden your, so social, your circles of, of influence to include other people from other tribes. Be glad when you're in a worship service and other ethnic elements or other tribal elements are used. Be glad to celebrate the differences between tribes. Pray for wisdom and sensitivity in dealing with others that don't have, share your tribe or your language. Think about our national issues beyond your tribe. So in this text, at the cross, all our differences crumble. At the cross, we are reconciled to God. At the cross, we are reconciled to one another. We live in a world that is so shattered and so, so many divisions in our world. But at the cross, we need to abandon our divisions. Because at the cross, the ground is level. God bless you.